the relativistic universe, overturns our familiar world through three uncanny features, length contraction, time dilation, and especially, the relativity of simultaneity. All follow from the fact that a beam of light, propagates at the same speed, in every point, in every direction, whatever the speed of the source. We can see how it all happens, with the help of a simple light clock, a light pulse, endlessly traveling along a finite tube, trapped between perfect end mirrors. We can learn a lot about space-time, from our light clock. If we place it, at different locations, in an inertial reference frame, we can check that it beats time, at the same rate. This shows, that space-time is homogeneous. It behaves in the same way, in every location. If we give the light clock, different orientations, we can check that it still keeps time at the same rate. This means, that space-time is isotropic. It has the same properties in every direction. But, something strange happens to a clock in motion. Let us take one clock at rest, and one that moves at constant velocity. Let both be oriented, perpendicular to the direction of motion. The moving clock appears to run at a slower rate, compared to the clock at rest. The faster its velocity, the slower the pulse along its tube. But, aren't both pulses moving at the speed of light? They certainly are. Only, the moving clock's pulse, doesn't move just along the moving tube. Its true trajectory, relative to the stationary frame, includes displacement due to the clock's motion. The speed of the pulse, along the real trajectory, is indeed the speed of light, while its speed along the clock tube, is slowed down, by the factor of time dilation. In fact, in the moving frame, all processes, appear to slow down, by the same factor. We say that the moving frame, displays, time dilation. But then, how does the stationary clock, appear in the moving frame? Since the laws of physics are the same, for any inertial frame, the moving frame, sees the stationary clock, running at a time dilated rate, as well. But let us look again, at the moving clock as seen from the stationary frame. There is still something strange about it. Let us add two identical rulers, one in each frame, both aligned along the direction of motion. And let us assume, they have identical lengths, as seen in the stationary frame. But since the frames pass each other, at equal and opposite velocities, each clock must pass the other one's ruler, during the same length of its own time. Let us say, the moving clock, measures the stationary ruler, passed by it during time, delta t. Then, the stationary clock, must also time, the moving ruler, pass by, during the same time, delta t. But it doesn't. Because the moving clock beats time, slower than the stationary clock, by the factor of time dilation. If the two durations are to be equal, the moving ruler, must appear shorter to the stationary clock, by exactly the same factor of time dilation. In fact all moving objects, and distances, between moving objects, appear shorter by the factor of time dilation. We say that the moving frame, displays, length contraction. 
Likewise, the stationary frame displays length contraction when seen from the moving frame. Now let us tilt our clocks parallel to the direction of motion and let each clock use two pulses traveling in an opposite directions. We synchronize the two pulses so that in the clock's frame they reflect from the end mirrors simultaneously and they cross each other exactly in the middle of the clock. We can monitor the synchronization with three additional vertical clocks if we return once more to the stationary frame, we can check that the stationary clock works exactly the same way. Notice the synchronization with the vertical clocks at each end of the horizontal clock. When a horizontal pulse is reflected, the corresponding vertical pulse is also reflected, either at the bottom or at the top. Let us also synchronize the two horizontal clocks, so that when their centers pass each other, their pulses cross the centers too. Yet, very strangely, at later times the two clocks no longer appear synchronized. While the stationary clock pulses continue to move symmetrically, the moving clock appears now much differently. Let us see, in very slow motion, why and how this happens. Everything follows from the fact that all pulses travel at the same speed, the speed of light. Those of the stationary clock travel toward stationary mirrors, but those of the moving clock travel toward mirrors that move toward and away from them. A forward traveling pulse reaches the front mirror much slower than the backward traveling pulse reaches the rear mirror. The moving clock pulses no longer appear to reflect simultaneously. Reflections that occur simultaneously in the moving frame no longer appear simultaneous in the stationary frame. And yet, the synchronization pattern at the ends of the moving clock remains in place. When a horizontal pulse is reflected, the corresponding vertical pulse is also reflected, either at the bottom or at the top. Conversely, from the moving frame, the simultaneous reflections in the stationary clock are no longer observed simultaneously either. In general, events that are simultaneous in one frame, no longer appear simultaneous in any other frame. Moreover, their order changes, depending on the frame from which they are observed. We say, that inertial frames in relative motion, experience relativity of simultaneity. In fact, each plane of a moving frame, that is perpendicular to the direction of motion, is observed at a different proper time, flowing at a time dilated rate. This means, that the rearmost point, of any moving object, is always observed at a later instance of its own time, than the foremost point. In other words, moving objects are observed, across a continuum of instances, of their own time. The three uncanny features we've just seen, time dilation, length contraction, and relativity of simultaneity, show that events appear very differently in different frames. And this is the main key to a proper understanding of the amazing relativistic universe.